is a really, really dark part of my past that I don't shy away from. I didn't have to walk that straight and narrow path that was laid out before me. It allowed me to know that there is another way, but you have to be willing to sacrifice in order to move forward. And part of that sacrifice is opening yourself up. So born and raised in small town Texas, uh, definitely Friday Night Lights style. Um, small community, we all knew each other. My cousins were down the street. We grew up playing, you know, in the cul-de-sac. At the age of 18 months, I was diagnosed with complete heart block, um, which basically means my heart didn't get the electrical signals that it needed to pump the blood. And I was able to get the care that I needed. But I was also told from the moment that I could walk basically that I wouldn't be able to live the same life as everyone else, that I would have limitations put on me that honestly no one else was going to have that grew up around me. Everyone was normal. Everyone could play soccer. I had to sit on the sidelines. Um, so that's really where theater came in. It was my escape. It was escape from the fact that I couldn't be like everyone else. I physically couldn't be like everyone else. Little did I know that I emotionally and the inner core of myself was different than everyone else too. So you're supposed to grow up, you know, and marry your sweetheart that you met in high school and have three kids. And for me, I knew that that wasn't my journey. That wasn't my path. I was born different. That is 100% sure. I'm different than everyone that I grew up around because I was gay and I was gay from a very young age and I knew that I was, I just didn't know what to call it because I never saw it around me. I mean, you don't grow up in, you know, a rural town in the South and not hear homophobic language or racist language or otherisms. It's, it's always the otherisms and I didn't want to be another. Telling parents from a small town and a small town mentality, um, very conservative background, that you are gay is not an easy thing. So I wrote an email. Um, I am better when I have the time to to sit with my emotions and my feelings. And it didn't go well with everyone, as you can imagine. My mom was mad at me just given the fact that I couldn't have that conversation with her. At that point in like societal standards, you didn't feel like you were going to be accepted. You just kind of knew that. Um, but today, she's my biggest supporter. I was dating a man after I had already come out to myself and I was 100% unhappy. And I didn't accept the fact that I was gay. And so for me, the best option was to see if I could take my life. But I got the help that I needed. And I was able to overcome the desires to no longer be a part of this world. Honestly, I couldn't have done it without my therapist. He was the person in my life who helped me know my worth and showed me how to find the resilience that I needed to move forward. It's important to talk about because suicide is real and it happens more than you think to the people that you love. Resilience is moving forward, using your experiences to shape a better future for yourself. Therapy has been great for me, um, and it's been great because it's given me the tools that I need to get through life. It's allowed me to figure out alternative ways around problems that I'm given. When I was able to choose my therapist, when I knew that I needed to get the help that I needed, 
I specifically looked for someone who was an LGBTQ therapist. Um, not only in the fact that they were specialized in that area, but they themselves were. So he was a, a gay older gentleman, but it didn't mean that he didn't understand what I went through or what I'm going through as a lesbian. So I didn't feel like the gender piece there made a difference. It's just someone who understood the world that I was trying to figure out those steps that I was taking to um, find myself, he had already been there, he had already done that. So he was able to really give me some great lessons in how to do it in a way that's beneficial to my future. I mean, what makes me happiest is knowing I'm different now, right, is that I am unique. There is not, I mean, there are thousands of Jills across the world, but there's not one like me. Not with the red hair, with the broken heart, with the pacemaker, with the tattoo, with the southern accent. I am exactly who I am. I am exactly who I was meant to be. I mean, I'm 36, so it's taken me how long to actually come to the realization that I am who I am. Perfect, unperfect, however you want to see it. But I'm happy and I'm whole. And that's the most important thing to me.